Amen to Pastor, that. Thank you Amen. To thank you, Pastor Ayan. Good morning, NBC. Where have you guys been the past four weeks? <laughs> ah, balik tayo ba? Kami ba nawala? <laughs> ah, nandito lang kayo. Ah, kami pala. Kami. Wow, that, that was fast. But it's nice to be home. Uh, it was, I would say, educational because what we did, we both did uh, vacation slash business. So it, it, it was a good thing. But I was telling uh, Marlene on the way back, naligo naman ako ah. Uh, we were in, in three states and one country in four weeks. So from Hawaii to Alaska, back to California, we went to Vancouver. But the highlight was when we had a cruise. Have you been to the Alaskan cruise? No? Uh, there's one. I would encourage you because they were saying when we went to the glacier, the, the glaciers are melting. They said before it was really thick and white. When we went there, it's kind of mixed already. So, but my highlight was sharing with Ben a while ago. Uh, barely that you would see the northern lights in the cruise. And I'm so thankful I was able to do that. I don't need to go to, to Iceland and pay, you know, but I'm so grateful for that. I shared some pictures. It was so amazing. And just to see the creation of God, amen? Just to be able to see God's creation, I think that, that said a lot. Um, so this morning... Uh, <laughs> When I was given uh, the assignment a few months ago and just going over it, I was supposed to talk about worship this morning and we were supposed to have go up. But the leaders of, the, of this church decided to, to postpone it for a while. So before we left, I think that was our, the week of the prayer and fasting, I, I asked Sister Nati uh, if I could, if ever, you know, just to change my topic and, you know, and graciously she would, she just told me, you know, whatever God would put in your heart. So I'm just so thankful for that. But while we were gone, just to let you know, uh, I, we've been following the church. We've been watching. Okay? So uh, from the time, I think we were still here when, when D Daniel shared about, I think, uh, about the enemy. Knowing your enemy, then you talk about worship. Was he, you talk about worship. Then Benson talked about uh, consistency and accountability. Then you talked about uh, the eye of the storm. Then last week you talked about prayer. So, uh, uh, <laughs> so I was just kind of trying to see where God is leading this because I just don't want to come here and just boom. And, and just to pick up from where you left off, and I'm thankful that Brother Saldi did an introduction about prayer last week because I am still going to talk about prayer, just like what you said, kung ulit ulit maybe God is speaking. But in the terms of, uh, you know how it is, this body of ours, our life, we need three essentials. You need food, you need water, you need air. Pag isa yan nawala, what's going to happen? You become weak. So same thing with our Christian walk. And I strongly believe that these three are connected. Prayer, worship, and the Word. Amen? Because there are times when you pray, you are led to worship. Or sometimes when you're worshiping, you're led to pray. Or God will give you things, a word to pray for. So it is connected. So, uh, why don't we pray? God, we are grateful. We are thankful. Lord, we position ourselves this morning that we are ready and able to receive to whatever you have for us. So we cancel, we block out whatever the enemy is trying to do, oh God. Father, we pray, I pray that this place will be a place, oh God, of receiving your grace, your mercy, oh God. So Father, I pray that you will hide me behind your cross so that your Lord, only you will be seen. And Father, may you open our spiritual mind, spiritual eyes, and spiritual hearts, oh God, that we may receive from you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just to start us out, okay, uh, I just want to build a foundation so that, because uh, this is important, so that when we talk about prayer, worship, and the Word of God, it won't just be a routine, because sometimes it becomes a routine already. Like a question, why do you, why do you pray in the first place? Okay, just a quick definition here by, by Webster. He said, prayer is an act or practice of praying to God or a God, right? Or, this is our common knowledge about prayer. 
solemn request for help. You, you pray because you need something. So that's our natural mind and understanding. So I want this study to bring it to the next level. Okay? So did you know when we talk about prayer, worship, or the Word of God, it's not limited to us Christians? Yes? Yes? No? Maybe? I don't know? Amen? Ewan namin? You know? So some of you are not sure. Uh, why do I say that? Because it's important for us to be able to understand this. Do you know that there are at least four to 5,000 relig religions that is registered all over the world? You're talking about four to 5,000. That's a lot. Okay? I, I mean, you can Google it. You can ask Siri and Alexa. And we all know that atheists, they also pray. They also worship. You know, I came across one of their websites, and they have a form of worship too. You know? And even Satanists, they pray, they worship, and they have their own, not maybe Bible. Yeah, we, we have to understand that the enemy, you know, once was the chief musician of God. So in terms of worship, he knows to play around. And why am I talking about this? Because, you know, you could be here Sunday after Sunday. You could be praying every day, worshiping every day. But where is it going? Okay, that is very important. So, because uh, I remember, uh, we all know that, uh, what do you call this? Uh, the, the Muslims, they pray at least how many times a day? Five. So before sun, sunrise, okay, middle of the day, which is about lunch, before late afternoon, then after sunset, then late at night, okay? And somebody told me, Pastor, mas ma magaling mga Filipino Christians, why? They pray six times. Why is that? They pray for breakfast, then merienda, then lunch, another breakfast, uh, another merienda, then dinner, then they have the late snack. <laughs> so six times. But, but anyway, kidding aside, when I went to Dubai to do a praise and worship seminar, I didn't know that they placed my hotel right in front. It's not a mosque. That's where they gather. Then, to my surprise, right before I, I went to the bathroom about 4, 4.30, and all of a sudden, you know, the Islam, the, the sound, you know, for them to start praying. And I was surprised. I, I looked out. I, I videoed and everything. Then that same day, I went to the mall about lunchtime. So same thing. It was a standstill in the mall, and I, I was by myself, so I had to stand there. So it's just amazing how uh, religious this all kinds of religion. Uh, one time, we were also going to Europe in a plane, and... Uh, same thing, about 5 in the morning, there was this, this Muslim guy with this carpet. He just, you know, the, the part of the wing that's made more space. He just placed his carpet and looked to the east and he started praying. Amazing, you know, the, talking about dedication, you know. Uh, and another example is when we were pastoring in the Bay Area. Every time we visit this member, we always see this lady in front of a particular tree. Same tree. And... Uh, we could only guess maybe she was praying because every time we pass, she's just there. And there are even religions, they pray to animals, to, they pray to trees, or they pray to, uh, you know, to the ocean, they pray to, to anything. So my question to all of us is, what makes our prayer, what makes our worship, what makes the Word of God different from them? Because if we just do it by routine, what makes us different? We're just doing the same thing. We're just babbling words. That's why it's important. My, my goal, my prayer, when I was preparing for this, uh, one of the things that was very strong in my heart that God is saying that there will be breakthrough this morning. Breakthrough in the way you pray. Breakthrough in the, word, the way you worship. The breakthrough in when you read the Word of God. Because my question, when you pray, when you worship, when you... How do you look at it? Is it like a Band-Aid or a Tylenol that is only good for four, six hours? Then it's gone? Because every time you worship, when you pray, there should be a fresh revelation, a fresh download that will change your life for the good. Amen? Are you, are you with me so far? So I, my prayer is that we will elevate all these things because here's the thing. I know all of us, you have all prayers, we all have struggles, and we want to elevate from that. For you to elevate to whatever circumstance that you have, the first thing you have to do, you have to elevate first your prayer. Because it will never happen. If your prayer is stagnant the same, 
no matter how you pray, your situation will be the same. Okay? So you have to, to elevate your prayer, your worship, and the word that you hear from God. Amen? Are you with me so far? Okay? Now I, I, I feel like I'm preaching. Okay? So I want to present to you another, uh, maybe, it's not an idea or concept. Maybe if you've heard it before, have you heard about when, when you pray, you also stand in the gap? Right? Some of you, maybe for the first time. Because that word, standing in the gap, th that is very important for, for you to know. Let me give you some definition. When you say standing in the gap, that means there's something that is missing. Like, for example, try picture this. Imagine we have all the chairs here. Then all of a sudden, you take it, that's a gap. So we have gaps now between the chairs because we want to use that for the aisle, for people to walk. So... Here's the definition. When there is a gap, that means there's a break or space in between objects. Or that means that you have literally to fill in something. During the Bible times, uh, cities, they had fortified walls. They create that. Why? It's for, for safety and for protection. Now, if the, if the wall has gaps, or if what they call if it is breached, okay, they would send someone, not something, someone to defend from the enemies, from people. That means people would risk their lives. They would go and stand in the gap. Okay? So, other uh, definition is, is to expose for the protection of something or to take the place of a fallen defender or supporter. So, here's the thing. When now, we, another uh, maybe idea of, of how we pray, it's not... Again, Webster, this is a, 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 a definition from the world saying that we only pray because there's a need. But now, what I'm, I, I'm letting you know that we also pray not only for our needs, but we are now there to stand in the gap. Why? Because we need to protect, number one, the church. Now, we have to protect. We have to know what we are standing in the gap for. Because that is important. And, and that's what I want to... Although I'll talk about prayer, but it will connect with worship and the Word of God. Amen? So, that is very important for us to know, especially nowadays, the more the church should stand in the gap because of all what is happening. Pastor, I mean, because of the economy. We have to know what's going on. Unfortunately, the church is always the last to know what's going on out there. That's why it's hard for us what to pray for. The more that we should have that urgency because God placed us here. So, the, the question now is, how many of you are willing, you know, to stand in the gap? Because you have to be prepared when you stand in the gap. You cannot, oh, I'll volunteer. You cannot be here and you're texting. Hey, what a whole sudden the enemy strikes. Okay? Because we need one another. We have to lock arms. Sabi nga yung kapit bisig. Because there are times we are not all... Uh, strong, right? In our faith. So we need one another. Even for our leaders, our pastors, we have to be there for them. Letting them know, Pastor, we are here. We are standing in the gap. It makes a lot of difference, I tell you. So we will deep dive now on this. But let me share with you a quick verse here. Uh, just a quick background. This was the time that Israel, it, it, it was really bad. To a point when... when um, God spoke to Ezekiel, even the priests, they, don't differ, they cannot different, differentiate anymore what is holy and holy, what is clean and unclean. And I was saying, Wee, that's just like what's happening right now in our world, isn't it? Look at this verse in Ezekiel. Can you see that? It says here, I look for someone. So that was the condition of Israel. And he spoke to Ezekiel. He said, I look for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness. So we need that. The wall of righteousness that guards the land. I search for someone to what? Stand in the gap. In the wall so I would have to destroy. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't have to destroy. But look what I found. My prayer, God have mercy on us. When he looks at us here in Burbank, I, I pray that, oh, I found one. I found this house. So that he won't destroy. So that is very important because we need I would call field gappers, you know, to stand in the gap. That is very important. So, um, 
another verse that I want to see here. And this time, you know, when, when Israel was conquered a lot of times, now they're trying to rebuild Israel and Judah. And this time, Isaiah says here, Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called repairer of the bridge, the restorer of the streets, to dwell in. If you're taking down notes, I've entitled our study this morning, Prayer That Builds, Repairs, and Restores. My question, who will respond? My question, are you up for the challenge? Because I believe it is not one or the prayer or the pastor. It is the entire body of Christ. It is the house. So uh, as we deep dive this, just quick here. Did you know... Uh, the pr prayer was mentioned in, in the Bible about three to 500 times, depending on the version that you use, okay? So I guess if you use the King James, you'll find more than 500. Uh, at the same time, there are at least 650 recorded prayers. And out of that 650, 25 are recorded under Jesus. And we will look at one of those prayers of Jesus which is the longest prayer of Jesus in John 17, okay? So basically the scenario here is, again, picking up from Brother Saldi, it's the same scenario, but this is a different, uh, you know, this is John's version, okay, uh, of, of the, the encounter when, when he prayed. So we will deep dive, because here's the thing, church, the content of our prayer, the content of our worship, and the content of the Word of God is important. That's why I said a while ago, when you pray, when you worship, when you read, is it just like a band-aid just to make you feel good? I mean, yes, it will make you feel bad. It should be more than making you feel good. It should change your life for the good. Amen? Are you with me? So the first thing that I want to look at here is when Jesus prayed, Jesus prays to glorify the Father. So I won't be reading the entire chapter just to save us time, but I will challenge you the whole week, uh, you know, just to go back to this John 17, because some Bibles, they have divided that into three parts. When he said Jesus prayed for himself, Jesus prayed for his disciples, and Jesus prayed for all believers. So I would encourage you so that whatever you learn today, because I know when you go back, God will give you a different revelation, another revelation. So when we say that Jesus prays to glorify the Father, so the first thing here that you have to understand, every time we pray, it's not about us. Webster said it's because we have need, but now we're, 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 we're shifting. Are you with me? Because we want to level up our prayer. We want to level up our worship, our praise. We want to level up the way God speaks to us when you read your word. So prayer is about God. That's why he always gives glory to God. It's more when you pray, worship, it should be more about him, not us. Every time you pray, worship, you become less and less, and God becomes more and more. Amen? So Jesus here, basically, when you start reading verses 1 to 5, he starts declaring and affirming and confirming what God called him to do. That's why he said there in, in um, the first few verses that, uh, towards the last part that I, I already have done my part. I have finished the work. Finished the work in the sense of glorifying the Father because that is His number one desire. In everything that He did, in everything that what He said, He made sure that He wanted to glorify the Father. That word glorify, was, He mentioned it five times. So there's like something here when He keeps on repeating that. So, when you pray, you have to be more conscious now, okay? That, just don't pray just for the sake of just praying. So, another thing that I want you to look at here is when he said, just let me read that. Um, Father, the hour has come, glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. Then verse 2, as you have given him authority. So, now he speaks about his position. Now he speaks about the authority. When you pray, Okay, it's important that you declare first, God, I thank you that I am your child. God, I thank you, the authority that you've given me through Jesus Christ, that's why I can come before you. And here's the problem sometimes when you don't position yourself, the enemy would just want you to pray. Just pray, whatever. But he doesn't want you to recognize 
where, where our source is coming from. That's why sometimes you, you struggle. It's so hard to pray or to even to start to worship because you don't know where to start or what to pray. First, you start to declare first who God is in your life. You're the authority, your position, and everything will just flow. Amen? Are you with me? So he gave, he declared the authority the Father was given. That's why he was able to do his mission. And even said here, um, <coughs> verse 3, And this eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus. That was his, he was just concluding his, his ministry the past three years, God. But at the end, I was able to give you all the honor. So the eternal life. So even for us, when we pray now, okay, first acknowledge the authority given to us. And before we can even do what we need to do, we have to acknowledge that it's all about God. It's about God's glory in us, working in us. My question to you, <clears throat> when you pray, when you worship, how do you look? How do you, how, how, how do you describe your father? How do you look at God? Is he like a judge just waiting to, you know, to sentence you because you did that, you did this? Or are, are, how do you look at God when you pray? Do you, do you look at him with the, he has a belt ready to spank you because you failed? Or do you look at God because he is your Abba Father, your loving Father? Because if you have that relation, you can come before him and speak to him anytime. And that is very for Again, knowing your authority, knowing who you are. So here's the three things. You have to know who you are, okay? You are a child of God. You have to know who you are, who you belong with, yeah. who you belong to. And you have to also know who you're after, who are you longing for. And that will help you when you pray, when you worship, and when you read the Word, it becomes more alive. That you will, the more that you will seek for it, na hindi ka na mahihirapan, you won't have a hard time or be, be in struggle. Just declare the first time, God, you are a good God. That in spite of... I am here to praise you. I'm here to pray. And, and, and it makes a big difference. It, it makes a big difference. The content of our prayer is important. That's why I encourage everyone, even before you pray, you worship, you have to be aware. We have to be, we have to be mindful on what we pray for. Don't just babble words. We have to be able uh, to, to make sure that we are conscious and intentional. Again, we're shifting. Are you with me? We are leveling up. Yeah, um, I like what Benson said uh, in terms of, you know, having the integrity and being consistent is we have to um, make an inventory of our lives, which is, which is good, which is true. So same thing, when you make an inventory of your life, where you are standing with God, I pray and I challenge you also to make an inventory how you pray. Okay? Because dapat nagbabago yan eh. Make an inventory of how you worship God. Make an inventory of how you read the Word. Here's the thing about God. God will never be boring. Whatever you pr you're praying today, whatever we are worshiping this morning, it should be different tomorrow. It should be different next week because it should be from glory to glory to glory. Now, if you're struggling, that it's still the same. So it's time to inventory. It's, it's about time. God is shaking you to make that shift, to change the way we pray. It's the concept who your God is. It's very important. Who your Father is. So that is very important. So again, when we pray, is God being glorified? When we worship, is God being glorified? Is God being magnified? And here's the thing. Check out prayers. I, and I'm sure you've heard a lot. Like in my close to 40 years, most of the time when people pray, the problem is more being magnified than who Jesus is. I just read a, a quote this week. He said, don't tell God that you have a big problem. Tell the problem you have a big God. Amen? How many here has a big God? Allah, hindi lahat. Hindi pa sure. It's about time to ask big prayers. Okay, you cannot limit God. So, when we pray, I mean, it's not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we should never pray anymore. For our, We all have needs. But there's always time for, for all of that. Sometimes, or there are times, or I would say many times, it's much more to declare who God is 
Okay? And you will see all of a sudden that there will be a change. Ito yung ano eh, what, what Pastor Ariel was sharing about storms. You know storms are good? Sometimes we will look at it, you know, physically, you know, siyempre, it, it's devastating and everything. But if we look at the spiritual side, storms are good for us. Because it will give us more uh, wisdom, strength, and you will mature. And, and do you know that the, uh, uh, the eagle is the only bird that can face the storm? You know, they, actually, they use the storm to their advantage. You know, they can literally go through the storm, but they, they can also go up the storm. And they have that laser eye where to go. That's why I was reminded about this verse, very familiar verse. But those who hope in the Lord is what? Will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So here's the thing. God, I'm tired. Lord, I cannot do it anymore. Why don't you declare first your position? God, I thank you because I have opportunity that I can pray. I'm a child of God. God, you said in your word, you said in Isaiah 4, use the word of God in prayer. Instead of, Lord, kawawa naman ako, ito na naman. Lord, I'm... Right? It makes a difference, eh? I mean, you will be, ugh. and even when, like for example, when, when, when you hear people praying like that, and I already have a problem, and what will people say? I, I, I need to be encouraged. So rather than magnifying the problem, God, you said that you will renew. I feel weak now, but you said in Isaiah that you will renew my strength. And God, I desire I pray that I will soar like, Lord, like these eagles. Give me wings to fly above. Does it make a difference? Rather just talking about your problem? God, I told you there, there's a lot of promises here. And, and the church, this house, should start declaring who God is. Are you with me so far? Thank you, God. And that's why I, I believe in my heart breakthrough is about to start this morning, all areas of our life. And just quickly here, just quickly here, um, I, I know sometimes, more, maybe for some of you, it sounds too, too good to be true, but, but how do we do that? Do I have to pray long, short? You know those questions. Do I have to pray loud or quiet? Do I have to close my eyes? Do I have to cry? All those are secondary. What is important is when you start declaring who God is in your life. Okay. Because here, you have to understand this. There are, every time you pray, worship, and you read the Word of God, there, there are two things that, that can happen. You have your personal time with God. That's you and God. Then you have what we call the corporate when we're here together, when we pray together. So that's two big difference. Okay? And sometimes when you have a person, that's the time you can get really into it. You know, deep, and you cry, you smile, you know. And, and those, those are... Yeah, there's an important thing that we have to know. That's why, for example, if you are assigned to pray in a corporate prayer, you have to be mindful. Just out of respect to people. Because they, they, they have to understand. Just a good quick example here. We were in Davao doing a praise and worship seminar. So the local church was doing praise and worship. So we started praise, worship, and we went to the worship. Second, third song. All of a sudden, the, so we, I was closing my eyes, and all of a sudden, the, the worship leader was a girl became so emo super emotional to point she was crying literally in the mind oh, God! with her voice really so loud okay so i was kind of disturbed when i looked up she was gone you know the pulpit in the philippines the, the wood one the big one she she hid behind the pulpit and she was down so at first when i opened my eye one eye i thought it was rapture so i opened my other eye and i saw mario i'm safe so what I'm saying here, and little did we know, we found out later that she, the, the person was going through something. What I'm saying is, because in a corporate, when we're leading worship or prayer, I'm not saying that we don't care for your problems, but there's a, a time for that. Because like for example, if people are coming to church for the first time, they wanted to know who our God is, ay ganyan ba yung God nila? Di ba parang it, it will ano eh? So we have to start shifting we have to start changing because sometimes it becomes a routine where we're, all, well, we're comfortable and anyway, we will change. But I believe this is what God is, is speaking to us. And another thing, uh, you remember Brother Jimmy, our guitarist in HP 17? And it, this happened in, in uh, Singapore. So right after church, uh, the, there was a birthday, just like later on, birthday. And they were praying for the food and the celebrant. 
And to their surprise, the pastor was praying, ended up praying for more than an hour, started praying for all other stuff. So, I mean, you know, it ended up like a prayer meeting. With, exactly. Lumamig ng pagkain. So, I mean, just being mindful again. Being mindful, conscious about what we pray. Uh, that, that is very important. Let's move on to the, the next. So, Jesus prays for the church to be sanctified. Don't be scared with that sanctified. That word means to be set apart, to be separated. And when, when we talk about, the, when God talks about the church, I want to concentrate more about, about this house. Because we need to pray for our, for our house where God has planted us. Uh, we pray, my prayer, that God's presence should always manifest in our lives, individually and as a church. I pray that, that Jesus will be manifested in this house, that the Holy Spirit will be manifested in this house. So my question to all of us, including myself, when I go out there, when people see me, how do they see me? Do I manifest the presence of God? It's just like the more we preach is when they look at the Bible and myself, is it matching? Right? Because there are times, you know, we, I, we, we could pray every day, worship, hey, we could, could pump up. But once people see us, when the world sees us, when a neighbor sees us, our office mate sees us, who do they see? So that's why we have to pray, God, set this house apart. Sanctify us. Okay? Because it's only when, when we are sanctified, when we are set apart. And by the way, this is one of the differences why, why prayer, worship, okay, and, and the Word of God is different from other religions because we have been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. There's a lot of things why we are different from them. And, and, and that's why I posted that question. As a born-again Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ and member of this house, you should be able to answer that when people ask us, what makes your prayer worship different from others? And that's why that is very important when we had uh, the, the, the next few weeks about what we believe. That is very important. You know, we just don't believe on anything because there are certain things that we really believe what the Bible or Scripture teaches. Amen? So let's, let's move forward here. So it is important. Always ask God for a fresh download. You know why? Because when, when, you, when we pray for one another, God, sanctify this house. Because the more we pray that, the more revelation will come and the more clearer that the vision of God will, that, that God has for each one of us and for, and for this church. Because sometimes we forget, why are we here pala? We forget. That's why when we continue to pray and seek and ask God to sanctify us and to level up our prayer, the more God will affirm your call, will affirm and define why we are here in Burbank. Amen? And another thing, when we continue to pray that God will sanctify, set us apart for a work, okay? That's what it is. Set us apart, set apart NBC for a specific work. Now we will understand that we are more than a social gathering group. I mean, don't get me wrong. A fellowship is good. Eating is good. Okay. But let's never forget the first intention why God called us. Because once we understand that, that we're more than a social gathering uh, group, now we can be, you know, God can use us to, to our full potential. Now we can go out to the world. Okay. So I, I like here when, so the next part from, Verses 6 onwards, actually to verse 19. Verse 6, he said, I've manifested your name to the men you have given me. So these are the apostles. So this is the house that God has given you. That's why it's important. So it has to manifest. Just look each one of us. You know, God is manifesting his, his grace, his glory, his peace. You know, each one of us. And when we come together... Try to imagine what, what that can do in the world. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. So, and he said here, um, now they have known, verse 7, all things, they have known that all things which you have given me are from you, for I have given to them the words you have given me, see the words, and they have what? Received them, and they have known, surely that I came forth for you, and they have what? Believed. So here's the thing, church. 
So every time you get a new revelation, first thing is that you receive, even though there's no clarity. God, uh, somebody's praying for you, get a word, and it hit you. You don't understand, it's okay. Just receive it by faith, okay? Then the known here is the process. Because sometimes when God gives you uh, a word, it takes a while. So the, the word known, that's why it's known, is because whatever you're going through, God will reveal His attributes. If you're in need of something, provision, God will mention that to you. If you need healing, all of a sudden it becomes alive. That's why receive made known because now you're experiencing, you're going through the process of God revealing Himself to you. Then thirdly, believe. Okay? Because sometimes you already have given a word, you're in the process, but we're still in doubt. It's okay. But the thing here is when you believe, that word believe, it's like you're being persuaded. That means beyond the shadow, the doubt, God, even though it's not yet happening or not fully uh, there, God, I believe. No compromise. Okay? Uh, you have to be convinced in, in yourself. Quick testimony here. You all know what happened to Sister Marlene. When we found out she had the cancer, I mean, you know, anyone, and I, I know some of you. And the worst part is when we were waiting for the oncologist uh, to let us know what stage. And I tell, that was like, woo. And, and it was towards the end of the year, December, and found out the oncologist was on vacation. Another thing, we got hit with COVID. <laughs> so all the, the things that is pondering in your mind, and, and during that, of course, your prayer, for me personally, God, of course, we don't want her to have cancer. I would wake up in the middle of night, lay my hands. We were taking communion, and the day came and told us stage 3 cancer. So, I mean, just like I, any other people, we cried. You know? Hey, yes, pastors cry. Okay? Uh, and to let you know, I question God. Yes, pastors question God. And there's nothing wrong with questioning God. But here's the thing. When you question God, make sure to listen. Because God will, will speak. So when I was trying to get all the verses I've known, and we said, God, why? You know, we've been serving you for close to 40 years, and none of the family of Marlene. Then you know what? One time, I was just praying, and, and God led me, you know that verse, be still and know that I am God? You know what that means to me? Shut up. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> because they, you know what? Because I've been doing, trying to do things on my own when he said, you know what? Step aside. Because that's why I can't move because you're there. Because most of the time when we pray, we, it's like, ano eh, naka-program na eh. God, I, will, I pray for this. The, it's like you already know, or you're telling God what to do. Instead of just let go and let God. Right. Or just proclaim who he is. You, sometimes you don't even have to say your need. Just proclaiming who He is. And, and when, when, when God did that, and now it becomes more alive, and now we said, wow. And that's why now it becomes a platform for us just to be able to share who God is and what God can do. So I have to hurry up with this. But there's no other church naman after this. Eh, no? So we're still good. But I'll, I'll do my best. So uh, that is very important. Again, when you pray, when you worship, when you read, are you getting something? Because you need to get a revelation. You need to get a fresh download. It has to be different every day. Whatever, whether individually or corporately. You know, I know we have prayer every week. We have worship every week. Kumbaga, there should be always a take home. Okay? There should always be something that you have in your heart. So I pray that this house will manifest the person of God. That means the attributes of God will be real. I pray that this house will manifest God's power in healing. Amen? In, 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 uh, in deliverance. And I pray that this house will manifest God's presence. Because that is very important. Because uh, church, we have to go beyond the shadow of the doubt. Just believing. I, I, I'm... Kasi tayo, siguriste, to see is to believe. Eh. But there are times that you have to really step out of the boat. You know, step out in faith. I'm, rem I'm reminded about, the, you know, the song of uh, C.C. Winans, Move the unmovable. Like, break the... I mean, just, just singing that alone, 
Wow. Well, move the unmovable. Wow. How, how can you do that? Break the unbreakable. And it said, God, God, we believe for it. You have to be then. He said, from the impossible, we will see what? A miracle. And that's what we need, church. And another song that I am reminded, um, you remember the song, um, The Presence of Jehovah? It says, in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty. When, when I was going, just that word, God Almighty. Who? It encompasses everything already. Parang, wow. Because sometimes when we sing or when we read the word, sometimes you just let the word speak to you. Or that's why sometimes in prayer, you just be still so that you can hear. Then the song says, uh, in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish. Wow. Hearts are mended in the presence of the King. Wow. Just being the presence of God, you can experience that. You can experience peace. Whatever you're going through, it will vanish. If your heart's in trouble, He will mend it. Just being the prayer. And that's my prayer for this house. When people will come here for the first, first time, they won't even, we don't even have to say something. Yes, maybe they will hear the prayer, but just, just stepping in that they will already feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's move forward here. Protect. So another thing before I go to the last. We also pray that God will set us apart so that he will protect us from the world. He said that uh, towards the last part, he said that because he's been there, he's been in the world, he said, don't take them out from the world, but rather, he said, protect them from the evil one. Okay? So, because here's the thing, church. I know we, we have been praying how to go out there in the world to be able to share and bring people and sometimes, you know, there are just so, so, so many challenges. Or sometimes we miss certain things, you know. And, and, and here's the thing, uh, another verse I want to share with you. In Ephesians, it says here, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So when, when, when Jesus prayed for that, I mean, he was already thinking the, about the future. And the days are really evil. And to think about it, it's hard, you know, to minister, to go out there. I mean, it, it's, it's just, just challenging. You know, uh, remember the, the, the Olympics just concluded when they had that opening? Oh, man, there's so many hate. I mean, even Christians, pastors, you know, left and right, people were just writing about their opinion. You know, uh, they say they, they were blaspheming the Last Supper and everything. And a lot of people are, oh, it's not about the Last Supper. But what came to my mind, remember that acronym WWJD during the 90s? Remember that? What will Jesus, they, they were giving out like bracelets and everything. And I was telling myself, what would Jesus do when he was there in that opening? Maybe he will, I, I, I believe that he will mingle with them. Because that's, that's exactly what he did in his, in his ministry, his life. You see, he was always with those who are, who are needing something, to the sinners, you know, to, do, to those who are sick. And, and that, that, that is a, a very challenging ministry, you know. Um, there's a gap. The, the reality here, there's a gap right now. I'm talking about right now between God and man. So... Who's going to feel that? We cannot expect the government to come up, you know, with a solution to fill in the gap. It has to come from the church, you know. Um, uh, some of you have been to Vancouver. Yes, no. There's a place there. Because when, when Marley was pregnant with our uh, youngest daughter, naglihito sa Shopao eh, in, in Chinatown. <laughs> so we went back. So we ate. Then... On our way back, because uh, we, we stayed in, in downtown so that we can go around, I told Marley I, I need to get like, uh, like a medicine. Because so when I was waiting for the, uh, for the Northern Lights, I, I catch a cold. <laughs> so I was starting to cough and everything. And I found a, a pharmacy nearby. So we walked. And to my surprise, because I've been in that place and never realized that it was there. When we, if you heard about Hastings in Vancouver, it's just like Skid Row. So we made the turn. 
Marley, all sudden, why are we here? What are we doing here? Literally, these are, these are homeless and you know those drug addict who, addicts when they call uh, zombies because of fentanyl and opioid? That literally, they're, they're just there. They're just, because of the drugs, they're, they're, their brains are really frozen. It's freeze. You know, and, and even their bodies cannot move. So they were just there, standing, holding the wall, laying down. And so we were talking about it. How do you react? Because sometimes as Christians, we have to expose ourselves. Because, you know, we're, we're just used to this, you know. And I was telling Mark, we, we have our own in, in downtown LA and even in, in San Francisco. So how do you react? Do you get scared? Do you get angry with these people? You know, we all know that God always says, Jesus always say. He hates the sin, not the sinners. So like for me personally, I was looking at them. These are God's creation. What has the enemy done? So Because th these are spiritual, you know, uh, things that we have to, to break. And who else can do that but us, the church? We have to break that, okay? So I know we can, all of us, if, if pastor will say, who wants to go? We will all go because we want to minister. We want to make a difference. We want to be an influence to this world. Yes, amen. But the problem is sometimes we forget other stuff or other things. Basta parang on the go na lang eh. Remember, uh, uh, real quick here, remember uh, the Great Commission? You know, we always go, ye therefore, you know, basta pakinggan eh. Go all over the world eh. But we never realize that there is verses 16, 17, and 18. Check this out. Oh, before I share that, this is what Charles Spurgeon, remember Charles Spurgeon? He's a Baptist preacher during the 1800s. He wrote that during the 1800s, and it, this is still truth today. He said, I believe that one reason why the church of God at this present moment has so little influence over the world is because the world has so much influence in us. Right? I mean, he wrote this 1800s, and this is still very true today. So, check this out. Before we can do anything, whether making disciples, outreach, check 16. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus appointed. Every time you see that, when, when Jesus is going to the mountain with his desire, he talks about prayer, right? Then secondly, when, we, when they saw him, they what? Worshipped him. But some doubted, okay? Then the next thing, uh, and Jesus came and spoke to them. Three things here. In everything that we do, it should be birthed out. It should be a result of prayer, worship, and the word that God spoke. And the kicker here is, and sometimes or most of the time, we all fail. When he said, again, all authority has given to me in heaven. So same thing, we take position before even we should go. Recognize God, we are going because you said so. Because you've given us the authority. Amen? So that is very important. And lastly, Jesus prays for the church to be unified. So we pray first a while ago for the local church. Now, Jesus is asking us to pray. Because, hey, think about this. Not one church or one den denomination can share the gospel. We need each other. Okay? But I like in verse 20, when, and this is basically when we started uh, uh, HP 17. When he said here that I may uh, all may be one as you, the Father, and I may be in one, and I in you, that they also may be in us, okay? That the world may believe in you, that you send me. Uh, let me jump back to verse 20. I do not pray for those, this alone, but also those who will believe. Think about that. He wrote that. He was already thinking about you and I, okay? So let's never stop praying that prayer. Look around you. One, one time. That's why we're here, because somebody prayed for you. So Jesus now is urging us to pray for that someone. Pray who God will send you, who God will give you, where God has planted you. When we pray for unbelievers, okay, here's the thing now, and this is where I kind of get more specific because we're, 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 we're growing our church. We know that God will grow this church. Amen. But we have to make the shift. Those changes. We have to level up. Okay. We cannot pray general or generic prayers anymore. Oh, God bless us. Oh, God, we have to. No. 
we have to really go out of our mind and really asking, and God, why did you plant us here? Okay? You know, answering the why, what, how, who? To reach individually and as a church. So let me present to you. I shared this already the last time I was here, and I want to share this again to stir up your hearts so that when we pray, it will be more specific, directed, intentional, this will, I'll just do this quickly. I'll share with you again the demo, demographics of, of Burbank. You can see here predominantly, this is a white community. This is a Caucasian. And just, Lord, why are we here? Uh, Hispanics, 20, uh, 24. Look at the Asian, 10%. And I don't even know what's the percentage of Filipino over that. Okay? Just to give you an idea. Okay? And now when you pray, you know what to pray for. Another thing here, look at the age. Between 18 to 64, but the number one here is 30 to 39 or to the 40s. If I classify that, number one are millennials. Number two are the Gen X. Number three are the Gen Z. Then you have the general, the, the Gen Alpha. These are the little kids. Okay, first born until 10 years old. Then you have the boomers. That's where I belong. <laughs> so, how can we position NBC? With, with, with this one, okay, this one, and now Burbank is saying that 53.4 uh, people in Burbank are religious. So these are just the recorded faith beliefs here. But here's the, the challenge. We still have 4.6, uh, 46.6 people that we need to find and pray for. A am I ma making sense? Because this is very important for us. Now, let's not just pray, God bless us. We're already blessed. Yes. We have to be specific now. God, give us this 46.6. Lord, give us this. Whoever is there, this age, there's a lot of young families here. So we have to position ourselves. We have to strategize how we can be able to be effective. How we can be an influencer. How can we you know, uh, make a difference. And, and I share this with love, okay? I might, I might not preach anymore. This might be my last. Just to, to point out the, our signage outside, okay? Because our signage outside says multicultural church. Amen? So when you say multicultural, what does it mean? Open for everybody. So I think another thing that we have to you know, I, I'm not saying we have to do it now or what. It's how we present our, you know, uh, our, our ministry. So I, I'm not saying that we have to take out or not speak Tagalog. I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's fine. But we have to start shifting, right? Because here's the, here, I, I might be wrong. Because God is already wanting to bless. But the thing is, maybe He wants to send, but we have to make that move first. Right? So it's important when we prepare, when we conduct our ministries, and even the songs that we sing, because think about this, what if, just if, just one, other people, not our race, would come and visit, and they start to feel uncomfortable, you know? So we have to be careful, because we're saying that we are multicultural, but again, I might be wrong, okay? But something to pray for, something to look at, and something to, 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 to really see, and, and we've talked to uh, Pastor Lester about this already in regards to that. And I want to close with this. Um, just like what he said, most of the time Christians are always the last one to know about current events, right? <laughs> we, for some reason, we always shut the door. We don't know what's going on. Um, but you see, for us to be able to stand in the gap and pray, we, have to, we also have to know what's going on in our surrounding community, right? Like, for example, to... to to this year's election year, we have to really pray for... I, I'm not trying to politicize or to come up with certain... But let's pray that God will raise a, a, a godly president and God will pray... I will pray that we'll, we'll raise godly men and women to help the president. Pray for the economy. Uh, it's been crazy. We've been to Maui. I, I, we don't buy milk. How much is a gallon of milk here? You know how much in Maui? 12. And because it's so expensive there, the people in Maui, they work two, three jobs. 
It's so hard. They're, they're surviving. So, the, the prayer, the, all the prices are going up, except our, <laughs> you must well do, except our, uh, and I just read this yesterday. I don't know if you read that. Car insurances here in California will go up 53% next year. It's already expensive. And they were saying because of the storms, the roads, and why us? <laughs> we have to pray. We have to pray for our country. We have to pray for our state. We have to pray for the cities where God planted you. Okay? Ask God. God show. Remember, elevating. Declare who God is and God will show you what to pray for. It will, God will impress it in your heart. Crimes is becoming normal. Stealing is not already normal. I was reading one state the, uh, when they were calling for people looting, the, the police even scolded the owner. You don't even have to call us anymore. Did you see that? Did you read that? It's like a burden to them. Hey, we need help. No. So it, it's crazy. I mean, these are, this is the reality that we're living in. So that we can be more effective. Pray. School is starting this week. Pray for the school system. It's, it's getting worse. I was talking to one of our uh, sisters, who also a business partner. She works in the school. So this week, the whole week, they were cleaning, and they told the teachers to get out all books regarding about Christmas, about Jesus. They're cleaning it up, and this is in public school. It's happening, okay? And, and we all know this, public schools, schools right now, the school district, they're even encouraging the students to have an option about their gender preferences. They're, they're teaching that. During the 90s, I know they came up already with a book which says that it's okay to have two moms, it's okay to have two dads. So that's the system that we, that's why we have to be aware so that we can stand in the gap, we can break all this. Um, another thing we have, I'm sure all of you have uh, uh, people in the medical field. So they came up to us and told us, you know, Pastor, in my hospital, when a, a baby, when a mother gives birth to a baby, they are being told to leave the gender preferences blank. And they're telling that we will let them decide when they have the right thinking. It's happening, church. That's why this is very important. That's why no wonder you have a lot of men and women confused. Am I a man? Am I a boy? What am I? They don't know already. They're, they're losing their identity. That's why we have to pray for this. Uh, another thing, and they passed this already in California, going back to after school. Satanists have been fighting for this for years because it started way back 2014-15 in the Midwest, and now it's in California. So the Satanist was given permission to have an after school program. He said, if, if other religions you permit, why can't we? And of course, they were saying, oh no, we'll just teach crafts. We'll have proper. Of course, we know that's a lie. Right? So that's why... I know we have a lot of kids here. I encourage the parents, be involved. Okay? Be an advocate. If you see things, you speak up. And I want to end with this. And I don't know if you're aware, if you heard, and this has been since the 90s, 2000. Did you know that San Fernando Valley is the pornography capital of the world? Since the 90s, right? They're even saying it's not San Fernando, it's San Pornando Valley. So now I'm telling you this, why? Why did God put us in a city that, you know, God, why here? <laughs> I, I, mean, I just want to steer your hearts, okay? Because I want you to really, we need Phil Gappers here. So in closing, because I know that God, God is speaking to all of us, in, because God spoke first to me in, in regards to what, just to put this all together. And I, I'm praying that God will really elevate all of us individually and as a church so that, you know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, we will all believe that we will all be persuaded what God can do. When you pray, when you ask God now, ask God, God, I want to pray as I have never prayed before. God, I want to worship you as I have never worshipped you before. God, I want to read the word. Lord, speak to me as you've never spoken. Because sometimes even you've read that word, you've sang that song many times, there's always a new revelation. So that's why church, I know for some of you, you might be going through a lot. And that's why at this point in time, maybe you're, you're struggling with that. You want to have more. God wants to have a breakthrough in your prayer. 
God wants to have a breakthrough in your worship and God wants to have a breakthrough when you read your word so that whatever areas that you're going through when you cover all these three this thing will just happen so let's all rise I'll just open the altar right now come on if you if you need prayer and even for our music team you know if God is speaking to you guys if you need prayer please come down here and we will pray with you we will pray for you because God wants God is a God of breakthroughs God is a God of of new, new new beginning god is a new a god of new stuff so come on we will worship okay we will just worship and while we are worshiping i'll just open the altar just come come right now and we will pray with you thank you jesus we just worship you hallelujah yeah if you want to be prayed for it's okay